Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And this is going to be part two of our M4 tank mid-production by Trumpeter, which is actually an M4A2, uh, which we're building up. And it's a 172nd scale in this video. We're going to be doing the painting and decals and uh, a little bit of weathering, some chipping and uh, uh, storage. Stowage. <laughs> a little bit of stowage forward and we're going to make an antenna. Uh, for our tank too and, and a final reveal at the end so you're not going to want to miss that and we're also going to mate it up with our last build which was the LCM3 and uh, I think they're going to look really good together so we got a lot to do so let's go ahead and jump to it so here's our M4 just as we left it in our last video so now now we got to take and disassemble our tank and get it ready for painting so we're going to pull our tracks off the turret and the uh, uh, the machine gun and being very careful here uh, and I'm I'm thinking that um, <laughs> you probably notice that those uh, slack adjusters there on the those rear wheels are a little bit bowed but uh, uh there's not much we can do about that at the moment so we're just going to go ahead and prepare everything for painting uh alligator clips work very well and then of course i like to roll the sticky side out of some low tack uh painter's tape and that allows us to stick all these real small items that we have uh, and hopefully not blow them away with the airbrush <laughs> because we're going to be priming all of this up in the same color. And as you can see, this here is a fuel can and it is really, really small. But that's to be expected in uh, in this small scale here, 172. There are a couple of lines that, uh, these are mold seam lines that I didn't quite get cleaned up. So we're going to go ahead and do that now and make sure that everything looks good before we actually go to the paint booth. So to prime everything up, we're going to be using Vallejo's uh, German Panzer Grey here, and it's a water-based uh, uh, acrylic uh, primer. And of course, it's mixed up for the airbrush, and I'm using this dark-type primer because we're going to be doing some pre-shading later. So now, if you've never used acrylic paints, I will let you know that you need to put a light coat on the polystyrene first. And that's going to really help the uh, the additional coats to uh, get the uh, dark color that we desire uh, to actually stick. <laughs> so, and I'm just going over the entire vehicle. And we're going to do the same thing with the turret and the tracks and all the accessories as well. And since it's a water-based acrylic, it dries really fast. And uh, we'll be able to come back in and add our additional coats just to... Get that dark gray look. And like I said, it dries really quick. And as you can see, we've got our gray on there. Now, this is really going to help us later on when we go to paint because anything where the uh, our, our olive drab of choice doesn't get into the little nooks and crannies, will be they'll just be shadows for us. So that's nice. Uh, looks good. Nice smooth finish. Uh, Vallejo Paint does a really good job for that. So next up, we're going to do some pre-shading. So I've mixed up some white here uh, to use for our pre-shading. And the paint that I'm using is going to be this acrylic craft paint. And it is also water-based. And it's just plain white. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Uh, and pretty much just mix it up like you would uh, any other acrylic paint for your airbrush. Just making sure that your consistency is good for your airbrush and nozzle that you use. Uh, I won't give specifics on my ratios because they probably won't work for you. <laughs> so, so that's kind of a disclaimer on my part, just in case you follow exactly what I do and it doesn't work out for you. <laughs> I don't want to get blamed in the end. <laughs> so as you can see here, uh, we're just going to do some center fill technique here. Uh, kind of gives us a little bit of color di a differentiation. Oh boy, that was hard to say. Uh, uh, a difference in shades as uh, we will paint over top of this with our final color. So uh, this helps give a little bit more detail uh, to these little bitty flat surfaces we got here. And this model is so small, uh, I really think that uh, 
it's going to really help us with our pre-shading. And here you can see I did do some some of the edges on the turret uh, there, besides just center fill. Now there is one little boo boo here, but we're not going to worry about that. <laughs> we'll be able to blend that really easily uh, when we put on our olive drab color. So let's talk about the intensity of the color. So this is to me is XF62, which is olive drab. And as you can see there, it is a really dark green. Um, and it is historically fairly accurate. Uh, the problem is, is that on a really small model, uh, you don't really want it that dark. So I'm going to be using this uh, Vallejo Parched Grass, which is my olive drab that I like to use for really faded paints uh, on vehicles. Uh, also for uh, really small ones, like uh, our little Sherman here. And as you can see, there's a big difference in the color uh, intensity there. Uh, the Vallejo is much lighter. And... Just stop and think about it for a moment that if you paint it with the Tamiya Olive Drab, although you may be accurate, um, you're going to lose a lot of detail because it's a small, the smaller and smaller that a model gets, uh, the more difficult it becomes to pick out details uh, on the actual vehicle. So in order to help that, uh, we're going to use a lighter Olive Drab. Now when we go to spray on our olive drab or our parched grass <laughs> in this particular case uh, we just want to go at it with little light coats and slowly develop um, the intensity of the color uh, we don't want to totally wipe out uh, all of our pre-shading because if you layer the paint on thick enough you will get to its true color and nothing below will will actually come through so we want to be careful that we don't get rid of our pre-shading because we really want those little um, uh, color enhancements to come through that final green. So next up we're going to do a little bit of sponge chipping. Now I'm going to use the same German Panzer Gray that we did on our primer coat and a little bitty piece of real close cell synthetic sponge. Um, which you can get from packing materials, <laughs> what have you. Uh, I don't worry about it dissolving because I'm using a water-based acrylic, but if you are using a thinner-based paint uh, or uh, something that uh, has solvents in it, uh, you might want to test that first before you attempt uh, to, uh, to use that type of sponge uh, or material uh, for your sponge chipping. Now, since this is water-based acrylic, it dries really quickly, and I usually keep the water and a uh, uh, Q-tip or cotton bud uh, nearby so I can get rid of that really fast and then <laughs> go back to chipping. Now, chipping is a real challenge on this kit because we don't want to overdo it. Um, making small chips in 135th scale can be a challenge. In 172nd scale, it's even a bigger challenge uh, because we've got to try to keep everything to scale so keep those chips small and of course you know we're just going to go and hit up all of those little edges where the paint might get chipped um, the breastplate and little areas um, all around the vehicle uh, you can also use it to break up uh, large flat surfaces too. put some little chips there Probably the biggest challenge for a modeler here is to not get carried away and uh, keep those chips really, really super tiny. So we can use the same paint uh, to do our machine gun. Uh, this is the bow gun. That would have been a 30 caliber uh, browning machine gun. So we're going to go ahead and uh, paint it in with the, uh, the same color that we were using for our chipping. It's funny how you can use the same color for a lot of things. Now we do have a, a uh, coaxial machine gun barrel just barely sticking out of the mantlet there. And we'll catch that. And we're going to use this exact same color for the metal parts on all of our tools. So Trumpeter molded in all these pioneering tools into the uh, rear engine deck. 
So we're going to have to get creative here uh, <laughs> and paint these. This is one of those times where we don't have that option of painting them off the vehicle. Just want to make sure that we catch those edges just enough to make it look like a tool, but you don't really want to go all the way down to the actual surface of the deck. All right, so I'm going to use the German dark yellow here uh, for the base uh, paint for our wooden handles. Now, I know uh, a lot of those tools were probably just painted green and strapped right onto the vehicle, uh, but that would be rather boring in my opinion. Uh, in my 135th scale builds, I always like to portray the tools as tools and not just as painted up the same color of the vehicle. So in this scale, I think it's really, really important uh, that we pick out these tools to give a little bit more color and definition uh, to uh, the accessories that are on the, on the vehicle. Now we're going to use the same Panzer Gray, except uh, this is the mixture uh, that we used for our airbrush to come back in and darken in our tires that are on our road wheels. And the uh, high rim that is molded around these really helps uh, with us being able to paint those up. Now you are going to have to rotate them <laughs> to uh, get them uh, painted all the way around. Now, if you saw the first video uh, where you had the option to build up the pre-molded bogies, then you wouldn't have that issue there. So here we've moved on to the ammo can on our 50 caliber machine gun. Uh, we're going to paint that this really dark green. So this is just olive with a couple of drops of black in it to darken it up. And it's the same color that I used um, on the LCM-3. And I think I also used it on the previous M60A3. <laughs> so um, waste not, want not. So... This is a good color, good dark color for, for our ammo can. So we'll paint the ammo can on our 50 with this. And then when it comes to painting the actual mount uh, and the ammo can tray, so that's the actual swivel pentel for the machine gun and the tray that's attached to it. Uh, we'll be painting that up in the same color that parched grass from Vallejo, which is a lighter green. Uh, because that would have been painted the same color of the vehicle. Uh, at least in my experience, they're always painted the same color of the vehicle. So that's what we're going to do here. And also a little bit of brown uh, for the grips on our 50 cal. Uh, don't want to forget about that. that. That'll be a nice little detail. Next, we're going to use uh, Tamiya's XF56, which is metallic gray. Uh, on our return rollers here for and also the slack adjusters uh, for our tracks uh, these should have been metal um, I'm pretty positive that they're supposed to be metal um, versus the rubber tired road wheels that we have and as you can see we do have those odd angles there at where that uh, track had really pulled those in uh, so I'm hoping we don't have any problems with that now we also have those return rollers uh, that are on the top of the bogies there. Uh, those would be just all metal, so we're just going to use that metallic gray to show where all the paint is wore off of it. And we also don't want to forget about our drive sprockets. Uh, those contact points around those teeth where they engage the actual track uh, wouldn't have any green paint left on them. They would be uh, re well worn. <laughs> so we're going to make sure that uh, they have a little bit of shine to them. Next, we're going to paint our ammo crates, but it'll be easier to hold if we just use a little bit of blue tack there and a cocktail stick with the real sharp end of it cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a little bit more purchasing power there to kind of hold those crates. And the paint that I've chosen here is going to be Woodsy Smoke, which is a nice medium brown. Uh, it doesn't have too much of that orange uh, in it, so uh, more of a, a neutral brown, <laughs> if, if there is such a thing. Uh, but we're just going to paint our crates up with that. Um, Going to have to have two coats on it, though. We are covering up that primer. But that primer does give us the 
give the uh, craft paint a better ability to stick well to the plastic. So uh, two coats is going to be needed for that, but it dries really quick. It's not a real issue for it. So now we're going to move on while our crates are drying. Now this is Burnt Umber uh, Artist Oil Paint, which I've placed on a little bitty piece of cardboard to drain off the linseed oil. These oil paints have linseed oil in them, which keeps them uh, workable for days, but we don't really want it workable for days. Uh, I'm using uh, uh, Tester's Enamel Thinner here as a carrier, and that being a solvent, uh, it'll also help disperse the uh, li leftover linseed oil in that pigment. Because the only thing we really need is that pigment, which is what we're going to be putting on the handles of all of our tools here that we painted up with that German dark yellow. Kind of give it a, a more wood look. Uh, and we're just going to put the pigments on and just let the brush strokes uh, kind of shine right through because uh, that's kind of the graining that we want to get. Next up, I'm going to use Tester's Flat Steel here. Yep, Tester's. That is an enamel paint. And we're going to use it for our headlights. So these headlights are really, really small, so we just <laughs> we don't need them much. Uh, just a little bit there and try to keep it as round as possible because those moldings uh, in those headlights don't give us a whole lot of guide. So back to the German uh, dark brown here. I mean, not dark brown, but dark yellow. I'm using that as a chipping uh, effect here for our crates. Now that we've given that uh, uh, woodsy smoke brown uh, time to dry, uh, the German dark yellow is where the fresh wood is visible from it being bent or chipped up and, and beat up, uh, being handled by uh, the tank crew there. So back to our flat steel enamel, we're going to be using this to do some dry brushing. And we're going to use it on these uh, oil cans and fuel cans here just to show a little bit of wear where the paint would be knocked off on them. Uh, don't want to really overdo it, uh, but these items are so small, uh, if we have any hope at all <laughs> of picking out some sort of detail on these, uh, we're going to have to highlight some. So just catch the corners a little bit and a couple of spots here and there. And that ought to be plenty for it. And while we're doing that, we're going to move on to our tracks. Now the teeth uh, on, on our tracks are going to kind of have a shiny spot on both sides. Uh, the inside where it's guided by the road wheels and then the outside where it's going to go up between the drive sprockets as well. So... Uh, You'd kind of expect to see some uh, shiny areas there, and then also on the end connectors where it engages the drive sprocket. Now once all that dries, uh, we're going to give everything a good uh, clear gloss coat of that X22 by Tamiya. Because we're going to be putting on our decals. Now, if you see here, this is the only thing that uh, Trumpeter has decided to give us a, a guide for putting on decals, but they've given us plenty of decals to work with. So I think maybe this would be a good opportunity to use a couple of those black stars. And um, white stars, of course. And there's also the vehicle number, USA number, uh, which we can apply to. Uh, to the rear panels uh, on the sides of the vehicle. Now, the five segmented circle that goes around the stars are actually way out of scale. And uh, it's not going to fit good or look good if we put these on like that. So I think we're just going to go with the standard st star, which of course we're going to have to cut out. So we have to separate all that uh, white circle away from it. So a little bit of micro set uh, is going to help us uh, get those decals to adhere to that clear coat. And uh, yeah, I like to soak these decals. 
uh, a little bit because these are water slide decals. You only need to give them about 15 or 20 seconds, and then you can set them out on your, ba on your uh, paper towel and just let them continue to loosen until they're ready to move. And once they move on the uh, backing paper, we can just go ahead and slide them off and adjust them into place. Now, a lot of people say, no, you just wet them and let them set out and soak because you will wash away uh, the adhesive. But the truth of the matter is, unless the decal comes off the paper, the adhesive is not going to go anywhere. It'll stay right there. So I don't think you need to worry too much about that unless you over soak them. And of course, once everything's lined up, uh, you're going to need to uh, use a cotton bud or a Q-tip and uh, soak away any additional water. And then we like to kind of roll over top of those decals to squeeze out any air pockets uh, that might be up underneath them. I don't think we have too much to worry about here because these decals are extremely small. So, And there we are with our USA number. I think it looks good. Uh, shame they didn't give us uh, better decal um, placement for or, or choices for our build, but we'll just pick out uh, all the ones that we like <laughs> and put those on. So I did use the black decals on the turret. Um, now this may or may not be uh, historically correct for an M4A2, which probably wasn't uh, on the uh, western front there. So next up, uh, a little bit of panel liner. Um, we're going to use that uh, to help bring out uh, all the little details on the vehicle. And here it is. I have it mixed up separately in a jar uh, and thinned, probably about a 50-50 mixture. Really helps the flow of it and keeps it from being uh, uh, too concentrated because as your panel liner gets older and the carrier evaporates from it, it'll start to get really thick. So that, that's something to look out for uh, if you have an older bottle of panel liner. And I'm just using the black. And we're going to go ahead and uh, apply that to all of our panel lines and our little details around the vehicle. And as you can see, it flows pretty good. Uh, if you keep it thin enough. Now, if you do have issues, you can always lay down uh, a thin layer of enamel thinner, and then it'll help the, the flow. We're also going to use it on our uh, ammo crates here that's going to go on the back of the vehicle, our stowage, and uh, that'll help bring out those uh, little uh, joints between the planks on it there. Now, inevitably, you're going to have too much uh, panel liner someplace or another, so uh, a little bit of enamel thinner and a clean brush will help us clean that up. And just make sure that you get all the little spots cleaned up that you want to before you move on to the next step. And the next step is we are going to seal everything in with this matte varnish. Uh, by Vallejo. Now this is a resin uh, varnish that is in a water-based carrier so make sure you wear a mask and use your paint booth to protect yourself from from uh, uh, any vapors from that 100% resin matte uh, varnish. So next up we're going to go ahead and install our tracks uh, and stretch these back on there. Uh, it would have been nice if they'd made these tracks maybe one millimeter longer, but they they didn't, so <laughs> we got to really tug on them to get them on there. So we're going to get these installed. And uh, yeah, they do bow those uh, uh, slack adjuster return idlers there. So... Uh, I just hope nothing breaks off. Now we can go ahead and uh, install our turret. Uh, it goes right on as you would expect. And it's looking really good. So I think a little bit of earth effects here on our tracks is going to uh, help bring out uh, that chevron detail that's on there. And we can use it also to 
dirty up the uh, exterior of the vehicle. We're just going to really thin this out quite a bit. So that's about a uh, 3070 there for that uh, mix that we got going on there. And we're just going to dab it onto the vehicle. Uh, the vehicle is so small, uh, you don't really have to worry about uh, a whole lot of things <laughs> because it's just not going to be noticeable. And we want to be careful that we don't get out of scale uh, with anything that we're putting onto our tank here. So a light coat ought to give us a little bit of a dirty, dusty cook, uh, coat. And we'll just go around the entire vehicle. So it's right about here that that rear return idler there decided to snap off on us. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to have to set this down and let it dry completely so I can actually handle it without leaving big fingerprints all over the place. Once it's dry, I pull the track off and there's our idler wheel or our return. And uh, yeah, it just not enough polystyrene there to actually hold all that tension. So we're going to have to fix that. So the first thing we need to do is take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and we are going to clean up the mating surfaces. Uh, we don't want any kind of product, whether it's an enamel thinner or an enamel wash or acrylic paint or anything like that, at those mating surfaces where we're going to cement it back together. And to clean everything out, I'm also using a cocktail stick or a toothpick if you so prefer. Next up, we're going to use Tamiya's Thick Cement to actually glue our, our idler back on here. Uh, now, this is kind of a gooey kind of glue, so uh, we will go ahead and mate our parts back together here with those nice clean surfaces in full contact. And we can just take and scrape away anything that kind of oozes out. And we are going to have to let this set and dry completely. So uh, I let it set overnight. So that was, that was it for this part of the build until the next day. So, so that that would be nice and stiff and, and ready to take the load that it needs to take um, the following day. So after letting our return idler... Uh, cement completely dry. We're going to go ahead and reinstall this track and hopefully we don't have any more problems. Um, I'm just waiting for the one on the other side to pop off. <laughs> so we'll stretch those tracks back on and we'll come back in with a little bit of that uh, uh, parched grass and cover up that repair. Uh, I don't think it's going to be visible. Nobody's going to know the difference. So with that done, we need to go ahead and uh, arrange our stowage on the uh, engine deck. So we're going to place our oil cans and our fuel cans and, of course, those crates, which are the center of attraction there, <laughs> and uh, kind of get things arranged. It's always good to do a dry arrangement first before you decide to commit to any kind of cement. Here I'm just going to use Tamiya Extra Thin, which will tack these down into place for us. And keep them from moving around. So, being satisfied with that, I decided that uh, those lifting eyes that we made in the first video are going to come in really handy here. Not only do they look better than the stock uh, molded in part that was there, but they are quite useful when it comes to tying down our stowage. I'm just using a tan thread here the smallest thread I could possibly find, and a little bit of CA glue, but it really doesn't want to stick. Now, uh, what's going on is this thread is wicking up the uh, uh, CA glue, so we're going to have to tie it, and we'll use the CA glue later on to secure the knots and let them dry completely. So, a little half hitch here to kind of keep everything into place, and we don't want to pull too hard uh, because we might break something off here and we're going to have to have a return on our little rope there to kind of hold our fuel cans into place now normally i would thread this through the handles but <laughs> these these fuel cans don't have handles 
uh, the way they're molded. So we're just going to go over top of it there. And with it tied off, uh, we will go ahead and put a little bit of CA glue in those contact points just to keep it from slipping off of there. And we'll give that plenty of time to dry. So next up, we're going to make us an antenna. So this is a little bitty piece of copper wire uh, stripped out of 18-gauge uh, automotive wire. And I'm just using a wooden block here to roll it vigorously <laughs> with a lot of pressure on, uh, on my cutting mat. And that'll straighten out any little kinks that are in that copper wire. I'm going to put a little termination ball on the end of it using just simple CA glue. And that'll harden for us. And we will put a little bit of CA glue on our antenna mount. And just put our antenna into place. And we did drill a little bitty hole there to accept our wire. That's going to kind of help us with our location. And uh, give a little bit more purchase uh, for that small wire. Now we do want to straighten it up as much as we can uh, while the... Uh, uh, CA glue is drying before it really gets dry and then we can go ahead and trim up that rope now that that CA glue is already set up for us. Next up again just a little bit of CA glue and that'll be enough to attach our uh, 50 caliber machine gun and the same thing here uh, once we get it mounted we want to check our alignment and make sure that it is pointing where we want it to point and that uh, like the ammo can is not at some really weird angle so we get it squared up there to the turret so that it looks right so now we're going to use just a little bit of graphite so this is just a standard number two pencil and i'm just scraping off uh, a little bit of graphite dust there onto a scrap piece of paper and we're going to use this as a polish uh, for our weapons. So we don't need much because we don't have very big weapons here. <laughs> uh, I am using a silicone brush here. It really holds on to the pigment and allows us to kind of polish over those details on our 50 caliber machine gun. And we can also do our bow gun as well with the same graphite. Kind of bring out those little details there as you can see a little bit of shine in the right places there on our 50 cal so now we can take a look at our finished little m4 sherman tank here and as you can notice i put a lot of little coins uh, around the turntable there to help give us the scale <laughs> of uh, how small this 172 uh, Sherman is and you'll probably notice that I've got a lot of European coins there that are no longer being used in Europe since everybody went to the euro uh, except for the UK of course uh, which uh, I guess you guys are back on the pound but I don't have any pounds so <laughs> I couldn't show you those so when it comes to my after build review of the kit itself um I think it builds up into a really nice 172nd scale Sherman. Of course, it is the M4A2 type. Um, I think Airfix has a Firefly that's available, and uh, there are probably some others, but those are the only two that I, I kind of ran across. Uh, as for this trumpeter kit, um, scale 1 to 10, I'm going to give it a 7. Uh, I just wish that the tools were molded separately uh, for the kit, but I understand, you know, being in a small scale, that's kind of a problem. And of course, there are no uh, protective guards around our headlights, which is kind of a missed detail uh, for a Sherman, but that was <laughs> way too small for me to try to manufacture uh, something to, to uh, go into place there. Uh, and then... Uh, of course, we did break off that uh, return idler uh, and had to fix that. So the tracks are kind of tight and just a little bit of filler was used uh, for that front breastplate seam. Other than that, great kit. I uh, really enjoyed building it. 
And here we have it mated with our LCM-3, which is the main reason why I built this kit. So, uh, you guys let me know in the comments what you think of the kit and uh, how it went together. Special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I keep making these little videos and putting them out for you guys to watch. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to give us a like. And uh, also, if you are new to the channel uh, and not a subscriber, I hope that I earned your subscription. And if you haven't built a 172nd scale armored vehicle before, um, might be worth your while to give it a try. At least give a little bit of appreciation for uh, those that really, really do a lot of modeling in this scale. Because it's, it's not easy <laughs> to do. So, until next time guys, stay safe.